welcome back guys. I did some off-screen training in between episodes like I said I would. Figured it'd be a good time to show you guys the fruits of our labors. Everybody's up around 16, 17. Beedrill made it to 20 and got uh, Twin Needle. So I think we're ready to take on the gym leader finally. Look at that, beautiful. Puff and Tough grew the least. Shields are already, I think, level 18 when I started. So with that out of the way, put drill bit in the front, and let's go take on Misty. Anybody that watched the anime growing up already knows this person. She's a fiery redhead tomboy mermaid, and she's got some pretty potent Pokemon for this point in the game. Hi, you're a new face. Trainers who want to turn pro have to have a policy about Pokemon. What is your approach when you catch Pokemon? My policy is an all-out offensive with water types. So yep, here we go. like somebody took Misty's original design just kind of flattened it out to make her sprite though. Ugh. But there she goes. She leads with Staryu. We'll try and lower its defenses. Misty actually carries some X defense that she'll use periodically throughout the battle. That way you have to fight a little bit to knock her down. Thankfully I used Leer so I canceled the first one out. And we'll use Leer again and get her down a level. And we'll start chipping away at her with a Fury attack. And she got a critical. That's nice. Thankfully, as long as you have a good team of Pokemon trained up by this point in the game, it shouldn't be too bad. But her gym signature move is Bubble Beam, which can do a pretty nasty number to anybody that takes it, even resisted. So hopefully Mr. Terrapin, he resists water moves in general, he just has to worry about their tackle attacks. And there we go, we knocked it right out. And now time for her ace. Pokemon I trained up Beedrill for, Starmie. It's Staryu's evolved form, actually, and it's probably one of the top ten most powerful Pokemon in general, and so she's got that going for her, too. Now, if I remember right, the way Trainer AI works in Generation 1, her Bubble Beam would do more damage to me than her Tackle, but since it's not a very effective move, she won't use it. So we can use Tail Whip to get her defenses down a little bit, and then start using her own Tackle to hopefully knock it out. Of course, she restored him. Though, thankfully, later generations give gym leaders uh, potions, super potions, and berries to restore their HP. Not so much the case here. But she did knock out Mr. Terrapin. That's not good. It's time for Prickles to come in and fulfill his destiny. The main reason I caught him is to use this lovely twin needle. There goes! One, two. One, two. Just like that, super effective, knocked it right out. It's probably the most reliable bug move in this game, too, which is the only answer to psychic types. Wow, you're too much. Alright, you can have the Cascade Badge to show you beat me. And we got some cash offer. Makes all Pokemon up level 30 obey. Includes even outsiders. There's more. You can now use Cut anytime. You can cut down small bushes to open new paths. You can also have my favorite TM, which is TM11, which contains Bubble Beam, which is kind of surprising. She didn't use it once. The attack animation for it is like so intense, and it's just hilarious considering it's only like a base 60 power move. <laughs> now, unlike the Water Gun TM, where our Mr. Terrapin would learn something better later on, Water Gun is actually probably the last good water move the Squirtle line learns for a really long time, so it'll be worth it to pick up Bubble Beam on it. And since Bubble is pretty much worthless at this point, we'll upgrade it straight up into Bubble Beam. You beat Misty, what I tell ya? You and me, kid, we make a pretty darn good team. You didn't even do anything helpful. Alright, I'm gonna go heal up real quick and then we'll head right back out. Now we can't leave town yet because that tree's still in the way down there. We have the ability to use cut, but we can't actually use it yet because we don't have the move. And the police are still blocking that house, so I guess we'll just go explore up north. There we go. 
see what kind of stuff Larry was doing up here. This is Nugget Bridge. Beat us five trainers and win a fabulous prize. Think you've got what it takes? Can't imagine what the prize would be. Could it be a nugget? But yeah, we have a five trainer gauntlet up here. Thankfully, you can actually go and heal in between fights, but in the spirit of things, I prefer not to. I believe my Pokemon have the power to plow through all five. Especially this first guy, he's just a bug catcher with level 14 Caterpie. And for the sake of convenience, I'm going to speed up all uh, non-important trainer battles from here on out, most likely. Pretty much if it's not a gym trainer or a story battle of some sort, we're just going to speed her up. Because, like, this guy in particular, for example, he's just the same stuff we've been fighting since Route 2. So it's not like it's something we want to really get in depth of. Whoa, good stuff. I did my best. I have no regrets. So let's move on up the ladder. I'm second. Now it's serious. This is serious. So we got Alas as number two. And she's packing a little pudgy pidgey, of course. Standard last fare. And I bet your other Pokemon's probably one of the Nidoran. Look at that. Nothing exciting except for some gust action. And yep, Nidoran female. Let's go ahead and show off our epic bubble beam. Probably sounds even funnier in a yeah two times speed there. Miss Terrapin got a level up out of it though, so I guess it's not a complete waste. How could I lose? Easily by having both your Pokemon knocked out. Here's number three. I won't be easy. I would hope not. You're the middle of the pack, buddy. Packing three Pokemon too. Little Rantel with your teeth sticking out the front of your face. Shame I couldn't get two crits in a row, that'd be nice. But of course. And Ekans. We'll let Puff and Tuff come in and uh, have a little fun with that snake. Ooh, got level 17 and learned Slash. It's a really nice move because it's got a high critical hit ratio and it's got decent power. And in this game, a high critical hit ratio means you're pretty much always going to get a critical hit. Ow, stomped flat. So that's going to be probably a move we'll hold on to the entire game. Did my best, I have no regrets. <laughs> Standard fare for these people. But you notice they all kind of switch it up just a little bit. Number four, getting tired. So we got another last. I was hoping they'd put like the female junior trainer in here. So we could have like one of each of the basic trainers you start out fighting. However, her Pidgey's actually strong enough that it knows quick attack. So I guess it's a step up from your ordinary garden variety Pidgey. Goes down just the same though. And another Nidoran female. <laughs> Not doing too much with our fury attacks though. I could get, nope, say if I could get two hits of a four or a five, we'd be able to knock it out in two. I lost two! Well, let's uh, throw a potion on somebody real quick. I did my best, so I have no regrets. And here's number five. Okay, I'm number five. I'll stomp you. Actually, I know your Pokemon, you're actually going to karate chop me. It's a junior train a male with a Mankey. Our first experience with fighting types. High attack, usually high speed, and high powered moves. That one in particular just karate chop my drill bit. So we'll just come in and see what we can move. Slash it and get a critical? Yes, but it outspeeds us. Karate chop's normal in this generation too, so at least it's not getting same type bonus off it. There we go. We'll just epically bubble it to death. <laughs> Whoa! Too much! Too much indeed! Congratulations! You beat our five contest trainers! You just earned a fabulous prize! Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo 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 -doo. By the way, would you like to join Team Rocket? We're a group dedicated to evil using Pokemon. Wanna join? Are you sure? Come on, join us! I'm telling you to join. 
Okay, you need convincing. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. That's right, Team Rocket was actually secretly funding Nugget Bridge. Well, I am curious. I wonder if the uh, five trainers down below are if they're members, or are they just there for the fights and Team Rocket just happened to be the people that provided the prize. Because, I mean, they're around in later games, so it's not like they got arrested or anything. Either way, this guy wants to make us join against our will. That would be pretty cool if we could have told him yes or something. Just get, like, a game over right there. <laughs> and there's that annoying rap, so we'll just swap out. Let Prickles come in and show off his twin needle again. <laughs> there we go, one, two, one, two. I didn't even have to hit it twice. And a Zubat. Now, Twin Needle should actually be neutral here, but in Gen 1, if the first type of a Pokemon is weak to a move, it'll still show super effective. So even though Flying resists and Poison doesn't, it still shows super effective here. Then we'll knock him out with a little Poison Sting action and get out of here. Arg, you are good. With your ability, you could become a top leader in Team Rocket. Yeah, but I don't want to be. So I'm going to run back and heal real quick. Alright, now there's some grass over here with a trainer. We don't want to fight that trainer yet, though. He's useful for a glitch later on. But there are some new encounters, so uh, let's go over them, shall we? First, we've got Oddish, which evolves into Gloom, and then Vile Bloom with a grass, or a Leaf Stone, not a Grass Stone. It's a decently bulky Pokemon. It's kind of slow. As I mentioned earlier, it relies on using the Powder moves to status your targets and then uh, knock them out with Mega Drain. Then there's Bellsprout, which is the physical variant, which is kind of useless in this, in this generation. Both lines are uh, Poison Grass, by the way. Bellsprout evolves into Weeping Bell and then into Victory Bell with the Leaf Stone. They get Acid as their best poison move, which isn't that powerful, but eh, it's a version exclusive. Or is it a version exclusive? I think it is. So, you know, you're going to catch one or the other. However, the other Pokemon here, Abra, saw it with a uh, Larry. It had no moves. It has Teleport, so it runs as soon as you encounter it. However, if you raise it to level 16, it evolves into Kadabra and learns Confusion, which is a decent, okay, powerful move. However, if you trade it to somebody and then trade back, get yourself Alakazam, one of the most powerful Pokemon in the game. It's got an outrageously high special stat, which means it takes special hits and dishes them out. Its attack and defense are kind of on the low side, but its speed is also really high, so it can come in, knock things out, and go right back out. Definitely worth catching if you want a good psychic type. Now there, we picked up TM45, which I believe to be Thunder Wave. It's a useful move. It strikes the foe with paralysis, which means they're speed gets cut in half, and every now and then they can't move. I'm going to teach it to Puff and Tough. On wild Pokemon, it also makes them easier to catch. So if you're using a Pokemon that's not going to want to stay in the ball, hit it with a Thunder Wave, then try it out. Sleep is actually better, and so is Freezing, but eh, my Sing Attack has a 55% chance of hitting. Thunder Wave has 100, so we'll use that more often than not to catch things. Up here, we got even more trainers. You thought the uh, Nugget nerds were bad? Nope. We got hikers, we got youngsters, we got lasses and cool trainers. All over the place. I just got down from Mount Moon, but I'm ready. <laughs> so did he, like, climb down Mount Moon, then go up through Nugget Bridge, or did he literally climb down the mountain? That's the questions I want answered. We got our first senses of a Machop there. It's another fighting type like Mankey. It's a little bit bulkier in exchange for being a little bit slower. But I say that's a fair trade-off. And then, of course, Standard Hiker Fair, they have a Geodude or an Onyx. So we'll just let Puff and Tuff come in and spit on it a little, knock it out. And just like that, this guy's done. Drillbit got the level 17 even out of it, so it's not all bad. Y'all worked hard, Harry. Oh, come on, you can't say that when you were reading Harry Potter and you got the description of Hagrid, you didn't think of these hikers. They pretty much fit it to a T. A big bearded man of the mountains? Perfect. <laughs> However, there's one thing to note about hikers. Look at their right arm. I know it's supposed to be like it's folded behind their back or something, but all I could see was a really big stubby hand. I'm like, ugh, what happened? Are they trying to make a fist? <laughs> 
didn't, it was probably a couple years ago that I finally realized that it's a bent elbow with hair on it, but still. Oof. You are something. <laughs> the trail below is a shortcut to Cerulean. So yeah, you can actually squeeze down there eventually. It's a nice little way to not have to zigzag through all this. Local trainers come here to practice. It's local trainers in Team Rocket, that is. Got ourselves a little youngster. Let's crush his dreams of ever being a good trainer. Plus, I want to play with that slash I picked up. Every time I've used it so far, I've been really close to being getting knocked out. Hey, you have a Spearow, I have a Spearow. Should have brought mine in so they could have played. But I want to slash its face up first. You are decent, I guess. All Pokemon have weaknesses, it's best to raise different kinds. Also, don't fight this trainer right here, either. He's also part of the glitch. Same one as that other guy. They'll be useful for getting a Pokemon you can't normally get. <laughs> Hi! My boyfriend is cool! I, I don't see how that's an appropriate trainer intro and how you challenge somebody by just telling them your boyfriend's cool. Of course, she's got standard last fair. A lot of them like to wield both Nidorans. I guess they think it's cute and they like to dress up and pretend they're dating or something. Man, it's gotta get awkward for them though when they get older. <laughs> Nidoran and Nidoran females start making little babies. <laughs> we'll just blast them with the bubbles. Ooh, we got the level 19. We're getting there. I was in bad condition. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can blame it on that. I wish my guy was as good as you. Ooh. I see there's an item ball up there, and it's blocked by this guy in that shrub. So you're like, oh, we gotta backtrack after we get cut to get it? Not necessarily. There's a nifty way we can manipulate how overworld trainers act to get it. So first we'll want to beat up this guy so we can sneak behind him. And of course he's got four Pokemon to make it nice and painful. <laughs> Thankfully they're Geodudes, and I think I'm a chop, so... They got some weaknesses we can exploit. So just water gun, water gun, water gun, water gun. I'm a chop. If he does have any fighting moves, it'll do a really nasty chunk to Puff and Tough. So we'll bring in a flying type. Alpha's that karate chop still did a nasty number. And drill bits down. That's nice. That's real nice. Ooh, Puff and Tuff's level 19 too. And we'll just knock you out with a little bit of water gun action. And then we'll move on to step two of getting that item. You got me! <laughs> so now all we have to do is walk behind him, then walk up, and this trainer will walk to us. I'm a cool guy with a girlfriend. I wonder if he's dating that lass over there, or if they're just two random trainers that like to brag about their significant others as a way of challenging other trainers to battle. Either way, he's nothing special. He's got a Rattata, and I think an Ekans. Garden variety Pokemon. And gone. <laughs> Aw, <Aww>, darn. <laughs> now, it's very important. Do not save when you go up there to get that item. Because if you save and then reset the game, that that uh, junior trainer, his uh, location will reset. He'll be standing right there blocking you, which means you'll be stuck. And it's a good way to get a game over. It's one of the few ways to get a game over in this game. Anyways, the item we got was a TM-19 Seismic Toss. We got a couple Pokemon that can learn it, but I'm not going to teach it yet. It does uh, damage equal to what your current level is, so it caps out at 100. And right now, everybody's kind of weak, so we'll save it. Anyways, I'm going to fight these trainers off screen, and then I'll catch you guys at the end of this route next time. So stay beautiful.